by revealing Peter's number five. And of course, we're talking about the George Floyd uh, case. Uh, You mentioned Derek Chauvin's name. That was a 2021 case primarily. But the other three officers involved in the murder of George Floyd, that of course extended into 2022. Why is this number five on your list, Peter? To me, this was even more interesting than Derek Chauvin's case and Derek Chauvin's trial because legally speaking and the ramifications and what we learned and what we saw coming from this case were much more groundbreaking than what came from Derek Chauvin, who there's actually video of the actions that he did and what he was convicted of in the murder of George Floyd. These officers um, were convicted of violating civil rights and they basically changed the way we look at officer behavior in the streets and whether or not they have to step in when a supervising officer either tells them to do something outright or they're following the lead of the supervising officer. When do they have to step in and say something? When do they have to step in and do something? When do they have to render aid? How are we gonna train law enforcement officers? All of those questions came up in this trial and because they were convicted at the federal level, there were also a lot of questions about why are there federal charges and state charges in these cases? And it actually happens a lot. Uh, My dad, like I said, was a former federal and state prosecutor. He did a full video on explaining the differences and why it's there. But at the end of the day, a lot of time it has to do with pressure and making sure that you get the bad guys based on what the charges are. And when there are state and federal charges, a lot of times if they get convicted in one, they will plead to the other, which is exactly what happened in this case, convicted on the federal trial, and they all pled on the state cases. Now, I also think that um, we learned about good behavior and Uh, time on the job and experience and some of the mitigating factors we learned about in this case because they were convicted of multiple crimes, but they all got two to three year sentences, which some people thought was not enough, but it it gave the audience a peek into what it's like when you have somebody that's convicted of a crime, but maybe does have a uh, a lifetime of service, community service some of them had, and some good deeds as opposed to lifetime criminals and why they get different sentences. So I thought there was a lot to be learned from this case. I think it changed the way we looked at a certain aspect and a lot of people were interested in it. So it hit the three uh, criteria I had for the list and it it comes in at number five. Yeah. So we put it here on our list as number five, even though we pooled kind of all three of them together. You'll find this interesting in our poll. Of course, you can continue to vote on WFLA.com. In our poll, this finished at fifth. Wow. So, uh, so far, so good. That's interesting. As far as you being aligned with what how our audience feels, it's actually tied for fifth with one other case, uh, 